Board Policy Committee meeting, October 15th. Uh, this meeting has been properly posted, Lynn? Yes, it has. Thank you. Uh, opportunity for citizens to address us. There's nobody here that's doing that, and then we have no bright lights. We do have <coughs> excuse me, a couple action items and some discussion items. Um, so let's get the first action item out of the way, and that is the approval of the policy minutes from September committee meeting. Moved by Diane. I'll second, please. Seconded by Corey. Any changes or que uh, questions, additions to the uh, minutes? No. Nope. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you. Then we have a packet, if I didn't count them, but it's probably 15 or 20. Legal updates, which we addressed last committee meeting. Uh, legal updates are the ones that we have moved into the of the three three categories, if you want to call them that, that we can handle here. Uh, we did we had the first reading uh, in September. We would now be reviewing that. Is there anything that anybody has any questions on it? If not, we can make a motion on that one. So. Um, and I, I went back through these, and I remember most of the conversation that took place. So if there, I had any one thing I was going to ask a question about, i got to get to it. Oh, 5, 51, 13. Uh, Joel, this was, whoops. Uh, be just a minute here. 51, 13, I think the question I had, this was the open enrollment out of the district. Mm hmm uh, and if there's a, I think that's when I came up with, um, that involved the, the, fam came up last the, week, the yeah. split family and all that. Hmm? Uh, there, there was a question that came up about um, split families and the term was Corey, joint custody. Joint custody. Yes. Um, we did some research on that uh, with Richard from Neola and with the Department of Public Instruction and the DPI uses the term joint custody. Um, I was able to... Uh, uh, Communicate with uh, Corey on his questions. Um, we also provided, I provided Corey the link to the policy on entrance requirements or who is eligible, uh, uh, enrollment eligibility, um, where it outlined our process for who's eligible in the district. And as it pertains to joint custody, you know, we'll, we honor the 50 50 custody things where a kid could be in the district if the father lived here, if the mother lived here. And we also don't, as a district, intervene and try to make placement decisions outside of the court. I mean, that's, <clears throat> that's the family and the court's okay. issue. And, and we just have our entrance requirements that we follow. So now it's, now it's coming back to me. Yeah, that. And I think the other thing I had a note on. Had to do with transportation. If I'm not mistaken, they don't get transportation. That's correct. correct. Yeah, I just wanted to be clear on that. Plus, of course, your father's residence is eligible for transportation, and we pick up at that location. So that there are some exceptions for well, like if, a joint if he custody. Was, if, if he was going to school in, in, so, our, in yeah, our district, dad lives in dad lives in Waukesha. Mom lives in. Uh, Brookfield um, kid is going to school here, and the dad's address would make them transportation eligible. We would always okay. pick up from the dad's address. From the dad's place, we to would the never school. go to the mom's address to pick up. Okay, and vice versa. Anybody going outside of the district is not our responsibility Correct. to transport. If, if somebody leaves us, we don't or, transport them. Okay. Okay, that was the only note that I had that came back to me. Did you have any, Dan? What, I'm wondering, do we want to pull it from our list since it's one of our discussion items? I. It's B under the discussion items. Is fifty one thirteen the open enrollment program in yeah, the district? It's, it's a s separate issue that we discussed uh, last week. Um, but should we just put, pull well, it from this list of approvals and just discuss it at, at that later point? So we have um, two considerations that need to be made. I mean, the language that would be here for the second reading um, uh, would be language that we would ask to have considered tonight administratively to help us keep the policies going. The um, the other question comes in as, does the committee want to add language that was proposed next week? So if the committee would act on the policy as it sits right now, we then would have to come back at a different time with the other language because it's the first time that the committee has seen it. Administratively, it would be easier for me to, to manage the open enrollment program, which we're going to come back to you mm. guys with in January. Yeah. If you approve the language that's in here tonight, 
Okay. Then and then we could come back and revise it again in the future. If okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, so you do so want to pass it now and then leave it in modify as necessary. Correct, and then we'll entertain it again as a discussion item um, later in the meeting um, due to the situation that we talked about last week. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, you had a question. Yeah, thank you. I did want to thank Dr. Cook for his um, following up on my question regarding that, that issue. And I think just for clarification's sake, it was um, policy 5111. Sorry, yeah. Um, Eligibility of resident yep. and non-resident that's, yeah, that's the other one where, yeah. Yeah. But um, that, again, would be the same thing. We're, if we're going to make any changes to this based on the discussion that comes up later, we can do that next time through, right? Correct. Well, I'm not suggesting any changes. I'm comfortable with the language. Well, you are. I am. I am. The clarification provided by DPI and Dr. Cook um, answered my question sufficiently. Okay. So, thank you. Okay. So I didn't get any other questions based off of uh, items B through O uh, that we entertained last time. There were no. no additional questions that came in outside of what we discussed at committee. And yeah, and for the most part, these are the, we can't change much of that anyway. So Correct. I mean, that's, that's the way it's presented to us. These are the mostly the non-debatable things, unless we want to just puff something up a little bit. But Okay, so any, uh, if there's no action, uh, excuse me, discussion on B through Oh, I would entertain a motion to accept these. Uh, so moved. I will move to accept um, action items B through O as outlined in our agenda. Thank you. I second the motion. Seconded by Di Diane. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I will ask for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That's a 3 0 in. We figured that would go pretty easy. Okay, we do have a new policy. Get this one out of the way first. We do have a new policy. We did discuss this, or we did have this last month for a reading. Uh, this would be the second reading if it goes through the committee. This evening we will be presenting this to the board in November. Uh, Joe, you want to just remind us about what's all included in this one? Yeah, this just talks about how we're going to handle the cash that comes in, um, what the expectation is for security around it, and when it's going to get deposited. Um, you know, for such events, sporting events, fundraisers, um, we want to make sure that we have clear guidelines to give to our staff, um, and then clear procedures that we expect our administrators to follow. Yeah, and this was an issue a number of years ago in the district where money was sitting around in drawers and stuff like that. And this is, I mean, this not policy doesn't just because of that. This policy is appropriate. Correct. It, it, it you know it comes through uh, by recommendation from auditors as they go from school district to school district. Um, our business office right now has done a good job of going through and working through some of those issues that had existed at one point in time, but. Um, but uh, you know we, we don't have that currently nope. going on. We just want to make sure that it's not a problem for us in the future. Okay, uh, Diane. I think this is just generally accepted accounting pr practices, and it's just putting it, documenting it, making it a formal policy. Absolutely. You know, and it, from the conversations I've had with some people, these are what we've been doing. These are the the practices that are in place. It's now just making it a policy to to make it enforceable. Yep. Uh, procedure. I have a question. Uh, this is under discussion items, but don't we have to take action on it as a committee to take it to the board? You acted on it, I believe. Did we discuss it or act on it last month? Acted on it last oh, month. Oh, and in this order would be a, an, if we adjustment. Right, and that's how it got to the uh, full board f as a first reading discussion item. This is the in between phase for anything that may have happened at the full board, and then okay, next it, month it'll and go And we had no board. issues with it at the full board, so no. that's why we all we we're doing today is if we had anything, we would change it, and then we'd have to review it or revisit it. So no, any other, nothing else on this one? No. And we'll, then we'll take it this way to the board in November. Wonderful. And we have two uh, separate I don't know what to call these. These are discussion items that they've come up from some other place, not Neola. that's come up internally because of some conversation, Joe. Is that correct? Yeah, so uh, last uh, week at the board meeting, um, some discussion came up about open enrollment and students who were expelled from their prior school districts. And so right. there's supplemental documents at your table uh, here 
um, uh, that you can see, I believe, that they are, so the current policy is in the kind of the yellow golden color. Um, the, uh, the updated one is in white on your, paper, on your page. Um, I actually did have that copy. Okay. I apologize. No problem. Yeah, would you mind? Okay, yeah. So just, Lynn will come back with some copies of that, but just to give you some overview, uh, last week there was uh, some conversation around um, the, the idea of bringing, uh, of, a, of how do we address a student who has an expulsion on the record from another school district. And um, as a district, when we passed our policies, um, we said it was gonna be a policy of the board to not accept students who have expulsions from other school districts. And so in some discussion around this topic, uh, one of the board members requested that we look at some language. And so Neola did have language written into their policy um, that you'll see, Lynn will bring it in in a minute. But I think the important thing to know is that it is still a board action. It's a board responsibility to entertain this. So our current policy does not allow students in who have expulsions from other districts. Right. Um, we just, as a matter of practice, if they have the expulsion on their record, we don't take them. If the board wishes to consider students who have expulsions, then the board, through our expulsion panel, would have to essentially rehear all of those expulsions. And so, um, so Lynn will bring the language in and, and you get an, op an opportunity to take a look at it. Um, but, but again, you, you start to, I mean, if you play this, this scenario out, right? Rick Nettesheim and I get through eAchieve 30 to 40 kids from other school districts who have expulsions a year. As a matter of policy from the board, we have rejected those. We've denied that entrance through open enrollment. We do review, then we deny. Um, if we start to accept those, we may be in a situation where the board policy or the board expulsion panels would have to review 30 to 40 expulsions a year because as an administrator, I'm not going to create a filtering system that may someday be determined as, as discriminatory in some way, shape, or form. So as a matter of practice, then we would be coming to you guys with, with every one to hear. And then do you want to uphold the expulsion from the other school district or not? Um, so we're, we're, I'm bringing you the language that Neola spells out. And it's a very process driven. It follows the expulsion um, uh, processes that the state requires from us. Um, and so it would be item P on the back. The following provisions apply to students. Wait, wait, before you go on, is, um, is the yellow different from what? Is the yellow, the highlighted part here, is it different than what's on here? The highlighted yellow would be additions what's to what is there. Otherwise, the policy that you have in your packet from uh, last week uh, is, um, is in the, um, is in unhighlighted. Unhighlighted part. Text so here, everything so. with the white stuff here right. is it's this. These are the uh, changes. Yeah, so okay. that what we would be looking at is item P. Okay. This is really the applicable one to that conversation. Um, the following provisions apply to any student who has been expelled from another school district or district that seeks to enroll in the district during the term of the expulsion order. So the district, our district, Waukesha, um, has said as a matter of practice, um, um, Uh, the following provisions apply. If the student has been expelled from another Wisconsin public school district, the student is not entitled to enroll uh, in the event that the superintendent intends to enroll during the term of the expulsion order issued by another Wisconsin public school. The enrollment must be approved by the board. So again, this is going through that expulsion process. Mm -hmm. um, if the student has been expelled by a school in another state or by a Wisconsin charter school, the superintendent may choose to enroll the student, but if the decision is not to enroll, the board must determine that the conduct giving rise to expulsion would have been grounds for expulsion of the district. So the two items that we have on the yellow sheet in current policy require board action. Mm -hmm. What you see here highlighted in, um, in uh, under P would be the process then that we would need to follow to accept kids who were expelled from another district. And so we bring it forward to you tonight as a, as a discussion, um, something to entertain, perhaps if you just wanna take a look at it, again, given the timing of when this conversation happened last week, when board packets were due, and the timing of our meeting, 
you know, we had to get it to you today. Um, but it's a, again, it's going through expulsion again. And, and knowing the volume by managing a virtual school, by running a virtual school, we get a lot of requests. So, okay, the first sentence, on, I'm back on the white paper now. Yep. The first sentence, if a student has been, I'm just making sure how this is working. If the student has been expelled from another Wisconsin public school district, the student is not entitled to enroll. That's, so we're doing it, wait, we're doing it. Correct. Correct. Today. Yep. That, that's our district policy. That's our district policy. It's not a state policy. It is. Um, it's our district policy to not allow. Right. The state allows you as a board to Make overrule the expulsion right. of another school district. But we are saying in the first sentence we're not going to do that. Correct. Yeah. So okay. we do, we're not doing that now. Right. And but based off of the conversation last week, there was perhaps some interest in adding some language that would allow it. And what you see highlighted in yellow here is the allowable language if the committee decides to entertain that. I had trouble following that discussion at the meeting the other night because I couldn't tell if he was moving in that direction, which surprised me, or just trying to figure out a way where we could say no as a board and not have to look at it again, I know that's what confused me. Yeah, so the, what we currently have right now is that administration reviews, and if there is an expulsion order, the enrollment is denied based off of the fact that there is an expulsion in place. That is supported you look at, at the, the state paper. level. We look at the expulsion order, we read the order, we look at the enrollment information, and that is denied because there is an open expulsion for that student. So we, we are honoring the expulsion order from another school district. That's been our practice. It's been our practice since I re came to Waukesha f uh, six years ago. I know we're not doing, but if we were in a district where we said, okay, we will take this kid because he really looks like a one-time thing, blah, blah, blah. If that kid did come to us, do we have to review? We, we don't have to. When we, you and I were talking about this, and there has to be another expulsion hearing then. You as a board would have to review the case as and it, approve the enrollment. As it the existed in the other uh, district. And, 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 re and approve the enrollment, yes. Approve him being enrolled. He or her. He or she being enrolled in the district. Enrolled in our district. Correct. So we're really having an expulsion hearing to override the prior expulsion hearing. Yep. And so the, some of the cautions on that, just administratively Not speaking. That. I just so, want to understand. so if you think of it, if you think of an expulsion that comes from our district, so we have an expellable offense that happens at one of our middle schools or high schools. Just you know, that's generally where they would come from. Um, you know, our administration from the minute that it came in you know, was able to, you know, hear what the concern was, investigate it, reach out to the resources. Um, then Luke Pinion, 99 times out of 100, goes in and does the pre-expulsion, um, offers a district level review of what happened, and then, you know, then makes the determination, this is a case that we're going to forward onto the board, or this is a kid that we're going to bring back to school on contract, or this is a kid that, you know, he follows our policy on discipline. The case comes then to the board. When the hearing happens, the board has the opportunity to ask questions of the student, of the parent, and of the administration that was involved in the, in the discipline process. Um, so you as a board then have essentially the best opportunity to review the cases as anybody would have. You know, I mean, you more or less act like a jury on that um, and, and sit down and pick through what was done and make your decision as a panel but only if the superintendent chooses to Well, I'm talking about state. a kid who came from one of our schools. I'm not talking about somebody who came yeah. from the outside. Okay. So, okay. so and, somebody and, who came from our schools, this is the process that we follow. Okay. Investigation happens at the school, pre-expulsion happens, case goes to the board, you guys have everything at your hands. Okay. The issue right. that we have from another school district is we have this, that's whatever you're, you're record was sent to us. compare that now with a different situation Correct. for Corey's yeah, question. So a kid comes to us from another school district with an expulsion order, I bring that order to you guys as a board, you don't have access to the administration. You don't know the, the extent of the investigation. I'm not saying people shortchange that. Um, you don't know other factors that, that were included at the time, and you, you're given this case. Uh, you don't know what proactive work was done with a student. You only know that there was an expulsion there, and we're asking you to rule on that. Um, 
you know, sometimes you may think that that would be okay in a virtual environment. Like, hey, we've got, you know, it's a virtual school. They're not coming onto school grounds, so how are they going to do X, Y, and Z? Fact of the matter is, is technology is as interactive now as face-to-face communication is. I get my buddies in the class. I can reach out to them on the side. We can do whatever it is that we need to do on whatever social media platforms that we choose to use. And you can start to run into some of those same problems or you run the risk of doing that. And that's why when we entertained these policies from Neola when they first came out, we said, you know, we're not going to accept. Our past practice hasn't been to accept and we're going to continue forward. So that cuts out all the need to have a following review with a, with a panel. Correct. Correct. And we just, it's, we stop right up front. <clears throat> and then it doesn't matter it's if you were really worked against us. It doesn't matter which school district you were expelled from. Expulsion is expulsion is expulsion, and we treat every kid who has an expulsion equally. It's just you're not coming in at this time. Go ahead, Corey. Thank you. And correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Cook, this new language as proposed, or at least for discussion, allows everything that you just said, but then gives the superintendent discretion to say whether or not they choose to enroll the student. And if they choose to, I guess, recommend enrolling of a student who has an expulsion from outside of the district, and then it comes to the board for a, a decision. It's not something that the superintendent or the administration can supplement the board's decision. Right. So okay. if you look at item O yep. in the yellow that we have here, um, item O outlines how we act right now, which it talks about, you know, if the superintendent wants to bring somebody forward, they can. Um, but as a matter of practice, we haven't so that we've remained consistent with, with our treatment of kids who are expelled. We would, never want, we would never want our practice to some way, shape, or form ever be perceived as discriminatory. And the only way to do that is to have kind of the hard and fast, if you have the order, an open order, it's a no. Um, right. You know, then, then we don't get accused of, of anything. It's, it's applied a evenly across the board. Correct. All students with the, with the expulsion yeah. from outside the district are rejected. Yes. And, but the dis superintendent has the discretion should he or she choose. Then it would ultimately be a board decision. Then we could say, hey, we've got so-and-so from another school district. We want to have a shot. We have that op option right now. Right. Um, we want to convene the expulsion panel to review this particular case. Makes sense. Thank you. Item O on here. Item P on here, what, what caused it to go up one we, letter? We do have a couple of um, uh, things in our policy that go beyond what they have. For instance, we have the jail. Uh, so students who are incarcerated at the Waukesha County Jail who are being detained in a secure juvenile detention center located within the district who are otherwise placed in a youth facility. So a kid who's got an expulsion order from some school district and shows up at the juvenile center um, you know, those kids then, by the nature of their placement there, they're given access to education. So they're, they're somebody. So we have a few more unique things because we are the county seat and we have the, um, we have the jail, which is one of the reasons why we go beyond um, what is in this template that you have here. Um, the other thing is, is and just to, as a point of note here, there's a third page, Bill. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to find out what added... Why is what was why, O why did is now P. P? I can explain. In the white copy, Yeah. letter M is about, and this is not what we adopted, it says students, non-residents may be accepted into the adult education classes. We don't have that. Oh, so, so that was So yes. in your beige copy, uh, we don't have that letter M, so everything yes, do. popped up one. M, non residents who's been accepted. Into, oh, that's summer program. Yep, okay, yep. I'm sorry. Right. I, I get it. I get it. You did okay. add, we did add this M. Or We did not accept. The and M. here we. Right, because we so, don't have that item. So is this a question now? Are we going to carry that M or not? Okay, nope. so nope. that one is going to go away when we talk about it. That was back in February 2017 when we adopted all the policies. We did okay. not take that. I didn't that think we had anything like that. Adult okay, so, so when we look at this over the next month, ignore M. And I guess, you know, from a matter of practice, I mean, we're bringing this forward as a discussion tonight if the committee wants to consider it further. Yeah. So if you don't want to consider it further, we've discussed it and it just ends in discussion. I'm not, I'm not proposing this language. I haven't written it in. I'm not saying that it's a good idea or a bad idea. I'm just providing you the information that exists. I just, what I want the board to understand or what I want the committee to understand is that 
if you want to accept students who have an expulsion, as a committee, as an expulsion panel, as a board, it's your responsibility to make that decision. If you don't want to do it, we can keep the policy as it is, and then we leave certain things up to administrative discretion, which essentially has been, we're just gonna reject every application that we get that has an open expulsion order. That way we stay consistent with every application that we receive, and, and we don't activate the expulsion panel, which then puts, I mean, if you think about it as a board, you're potentially putting yourself in a position which you are going to enroll a student who was expelled from another school district and their board of education had a good re reason for expelling them. You know, it, it may not be our board standards, it was their board standards, but we don't have a history with that particular student. And I'm not opposed to second chances and things like that. Most of the expulsion orders that we see give that student options within that district for services similar to how our board operates. Um, but, but again, it's, it's a risk anytime you're taking that on. Well, I don't know if Corey is familiar with this little brackets with a little check mark on it. Those are choices that we have. Yeah. Yep. What you've done here with the X in the, fir in the first one is, is basically repeated what's over here. Correct. But, this, we, but you've left off the next part, which is what we don't want to do. Yeah, so what you have in the white is just the language that Neola provides, right. and we highlighted it. This isn't a proposed policy. This is a point of reference for you right. this evening. Right. What we have here in the, in the gold is the approved Waukesha board policy. Uh, and so I'm asking if you want to entertain this language or not, give an opportunity to ask me questions on it. But again, I making my recommendation or providing. Yeah, I get it, Corey. I'm sorry, I don't want to beleaguer the point, but let me make sure I'm not confused then. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're forgiven, it's okay. very confusing. <laughs> so the, the yellow sheet uh, is the current standing policy. Correct, the one you have okay. your fingers on right now. Yep, and the white one with a highlighted is language from Neola that is subject or proposed for discussion today. Correct. The first highlighted section under section P mm -hmm. is that that is what is suggested to be discussed to be added. Yep. Why is, is all the other highlighted yellow language? That was based off of what was talked about last week. Right. Of this. That a board member requested of me to bring this to committee. Right. Um, which, I, which I've done. The, the language that you see under point one right. corresponds to O in our policy. And so if, if you read along in all, I, you can look at that. It mm -hmm. says, item number one, if the student has been expelled from another Wisconsin public school district, the student is not entitled to enroll, period. In the event that the superintendent intends to enroll a student for, uh, during the term of an expulsion order issued by another Wisconsin public school, the enrollment must be approved by the board. So you can see then in, in what we're, we have in white, we just check that box so that you guys have an understanding as a committee that this is what is currently in policy. And then item number two is that second paragraph. If the student has been expelled, then it continues on and the term of the expulsion. That paragraph is in, in its entirety in our current policy. Right. What we do not have is item number three under conditional enrollment, which talks about you know, essentially bringing the case forward again and putting some limits on the student and so on and so forth. So with what we have up here, we don't need okay. all this. Is that what you're saying? Correct. I'm. I'm just saying that I we don't, brought it. Yeah. Right. I. I would. I would just orientate the committee. Um, a year and a half ago, Rick Nettesheim and I proposed a charter, uh, another charter school that would have kind of been housed under E Achieve to the Finance and Facilities Committee um, yeah. to to address students who had expulsion orders and were at risk from other school districts. And the committee at the time, to paraphrase, essentially said, this is the worst idea we've ever heard. We don't want to work with anybody else's problems. You can go online to find the, uh, the, um, the exact words that committee members use to describe it. So at this particular point in time, I think that we would be opening ourselves up to that same discussion that was had a year and a half ago at FNF on the idea of serving kids who came from another school. I don't necessarily know if that mixes well with with what the board's values were at that time. 
I guess the question would be at this point, is there anybody here who wants to take some time between now and next month to re read through the rest of this? I personally want to stay where, the way we are, but I'll just tell you that's my view, but you can certainly have your view. Administratively, I can take your feedback tonight. And I think you need, you know, we can just put this in the file and say we looked at it, or um, we can agendize it for November's meeting and come back and discuss it if, if you'd like. Go ahead, Corey. I, I'd suggest the latter. My gut right now is I think the policy as it is is fine. It gives the superintendent discretion and ultimately makes it a board decision. But since I we just got I'm this. I'd like to just a little bit of time to read it, if I, I could. And I have no argument with that. Okay. So we will agendize we it will in do that. November. Bring it over um, for further, for further discussion. discussion. <clears throat> that time. Thank you. No problem. And we can also Would you then make that available for everybody else that had asked raised those questions at the last board meeting that Not they can yet. review that? Not at, no. this, at this moment, it would still stay as a committee it's thing committee. because the committee hasn't acted in any way, shape. If you guys would say the next month, so we talk about it in November and December, if you'd like it, I agendize for action. Uh, then we would then we would start to then build it okay. into the loop for the whole board to, to weigh in on. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. That would take care of Roman number four B. We have another item for discussion. Which just let's see over here. I want to keep these things together. There. Okay, policy 80, 8462 and uh, administrative guideline eighty four sixty two dealing with child abuse and neglect and threats of violence. So um, another one you brought up back just for discussion, right? Correct. So last uh, week at the board meeting, a uh, board member asked that we add mandatory annual training for staff on reporting abuse and neglect to the policy. So. In the gold here, you have the policy uh, on mandatory reporting. This was updated as recently as September of this past, uh, I'm sorry, of April of 19. And then we updated the administrative guidelines in September to reflect the, the policy updates, um, which, which really the genesis of those was the, I, the uh, school safety legislation that was passed and the idea of threats of violence. So um, so you, you have the policy there to review. Um, I just wanted the committee to understand that administratively we have done a number of things um, uh, to address the annual training of this. So in your packet, you'll see a form, Annual Required Employee Policy and Hand Handbook Review. Uh, if you could take a look at this sheet here. On this sheet, we outlined several policies um, and administrative guidelines that all staff must review. Principals review this, and annually, staff signs off that they reviewed those policies. Um, you can see on the second page, I'm sorry, it'd be the third printed page of it, you see that there's an area there for staff signature and the date by which they signed it. So principal of such and such a school does this policy review with staff. Um, they sign off, uh, and, and it's, it's taken care of there. Um, the second sheet that I would uh, direct you to is the um, sheet that talks about that the employee has acknowledged receipt of the employee handbook. The reason why I, I bring that to your attention is the employee handbook um, has a section that's the last printed page uh, page 52, it's before the signature, and it says student abuse and neglect, and it uh, links the policy directly to that. So upon hire, the staff has to review this as a policy. The other thing that staff have to do is once every five years, and we talked about this at the committee level and at the board level, is that they have to review the formal DPI training on abuse and neglect and threats of school violence. Um, so that is that is built in. And also annually, our psychologists, social workers, and counselors do a presentation at the beginning of the school year um, to our staff at all of our buildings on the requirement of reporting abuse and neglect. So we have a number of steps that we've built in administratively. I wanted to make the committee aware of that. Um, and then if you want it put into policy, we could put it into policy. If you want, Todd and I can add it to administrative guidelines and we could build it into administrative guidelines. We already have it as a practice, so wherever it ends up, I'll defer to the committee 
Um, if you want it built into port board policy that we talk about an annual training and review, um, we currently do it. It's not an addition for any of our any of our schools or our staff. It's just a matter of what well, really you guys all. Are. Uh, all that would be required would be taking 8462 and saying we do have such a such and such as a policy as a pr practice. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I would say. I mean, my re my proposed language would go in the first paragraph, right under child abuse and neglect, um, and it would say that the board directs administration to ensure that all staff are trained on an annual basis, and then then you have your statement of training that does go above what the DPI requires. Um, for a training requirement, and it does then reflect what we do as a school yeah, district. Yeah, and I think, you guys have any views on that? Diane, Corey? Well, I, I know the past practice is that this is being done. You know, it's just a matter, of, again, almost like the cash handling. It's a matter of, well, like, formalizing this on the policy. policy. If you want to go through that step, you know, just to document it. The nature of my job, I deal with juvenile court a lot, and even not with the school board. I have had numerous discussions over the years, last three, four, five years, from teachers and educators who have a situation, and they're unsure if, I shouldn't say numerous, I should say more than I expected, if this is something that requires the mandatory um, reporting standard. And my answer has always been, I don't know, so the answer is yes. Um, so I like, the, <laughs> I like the policies in place, at the triple redundancy. I, I think you mentioned that annually the teachers are instructed at the beginning of the year. Yep. I would just encourage it to make it as simple as possible about if you suspect abuse, you have to at least, if not report, go up your chain of command oh. and not just, or I'm sorry, not, <laughs> let me not modify the policy. Uh, let me, if I, I, I don't know, let me suggest this as a question. I've had teachers come to me and other people come to me and say, here's a factual basis. Do you think this triggers my obligation and the mandatory obligation to report? Um, just the fact that they're coming to an outside person who's not at that time a district employee was troublesome. So I, and it's not a district failure. I think that's it, those individuals' mm -hmm. failures. So, yep. Second paragraph of the policy here states: Staff members are required to make a report to the proper legal authorities if, in the course of the performance of a staff member's responsibilities, they have a any reasonable cause to suspect that a child has been abused or neglected, b reason to believe that a child has been threatened with abuse or neglect, and that abuse or neglect of the child will occur, and c good faith belief based on a threat made by an individual regarding violence in or targeted at a school that there is a serious and imminent threat to the health and safety of a student, school employee, or the public. And so, I mean, we are right. and explicit I'm that if you suspect it, I mean, if you, if you see bruises, if you see disheveled child, if you hear kids talking, whether it's in jest or not, that that reporting process is triggered and that you call. We have psych social workers and counselors and administrators in the office to help that staff member make the call, but that staff member must make that call. Now, it, I, and I, I misspoke, and I treaded on something that I should have <laughs> suggested. Reasonable cause, I think, is what people have come to me and say, what is reasonable cause? And it's exactly what you just said. If you have reason to suspect, it's not beyond a reasonable doubt. It's not, it's, if you have reason to suspect, you report. Joe, you know, that ABC that you were talking about is in the administrative guideline. The teachers are told in this thing they have to review the policies. Yep. Where would a teacher know that they should have read this paragraph? That you administrative just... guideline is also listed in the this? employee handbook, AG 8462. Oh. oh, that was the one you showed. It is also yeah, referenced. Um, yeah. It is also referenced uh, when I our student services staff do their um, do their uh, annual uh, um, training, and it is also referenced. This doesn't seem to. Have, this thing doesn't seem to have guidelines on it, but this does. Right. Okay. Right. So we we address staff on this topic. I would think over so. and over again. Um, we have met with Waukesha County Health and Human Services uh, on this topic. Um, we've, we've discussed the reporting requirements with them. Um, as the board knows, we've been heavily involved in a, this particular topic now going back about 20 months. Um, and, and it is something that is not 
taken lightly and that everybody has a very, um, everybody knows that it is a, a, an area of focus for our district. Oh, this is a signature sheet for this. Correct. Okay. Correct. Just to know that it's signed off on and maintained in human resources. Good. Yeah, Diane. I, I just want to share that I went through a, a background check to be able to be a volunteer at a 3K program, and that was one of the expectations that we read, read that, that policy and realized that if we saw any sign of, you know, potential abuse, that we need to be reporting it. So even as a volunteer, you know, in, in that kind of context, it's it's just one of the expectations that you be aware of that that policy. So if you'd like the language added to policy, we can put it in policy. If you'd like it outlined as an ex expectation administrative guideline, we can do that. Um, we just, this has been a matter of practice um, for us. Uh, um, Luke Pinion worked with a group of uh, psychologists, social workers, and counselors. And he does it annually to update our, our trainings to staff. We talk about mandatory reporting. We talk about the McKinney-Vento Homeless Child Act. We talk about our AODA resources. We give them all of that. Um, this is an area that's been highlighted though significantly. When we do a, a policy, 8462, do we reference the, the fact that there is an administrative guideline that you should also be reviewing any place on the policy? I don't yeah. see it. Well, right here it's saying, I'm, policy 8462, student abuse and neglect, and then AG 8462. Yeah, I'm looking at the person that's reading the policy. Well, if you look in the handbook, it's yeah, which they, which they do once in August, right? Right. So it's September, it's October, it's November, and all of a sudden I'm curious, I pull out 8462, child abuse and neglect, and it doesn't refer to the administrative guideline. And if I'm looking at this. Okay. It does in the end. So the uh, each principal should be mindful of the possibility of physical or mental abuse being inflicted upon by a student by any employee. Any such instances which are real or alleged should be dealt with in it. accordance with the administrative guidelines established by the superintendent. Okay. So there is your reference to administrative there. guidelines. Okay. Deal. I'm comfortable with whatever the committee I think the recommend. sentence you talked about putting in at, right up the top would be my preference. So next month, Lynn and I will come back to committee with a proposed sentence to be attached to the first paragraph. Or the policy. The policy. Oh, okay. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember where, where, where this came up in the board meeting. It was, it was, it was about a, the question about are we requiring annual training on this stuff? That was it? Yep. Okay. Yep. That's enough. Ah, uh, wow. Well, we had two good discussion items tonight. Do we have anything else to cover? Oh, sir. Recommendations for future committee meetings? We talked about one right now. Anything else? The Dan? other would be to, to take the baby step towards the idea of going paperless. I don't know that we're ready to, in, you know, and technology committee is the one that's going to have to review the, the going with uh, you know, the, the total paperless board docs kind of a approach to things. But if this committee could take the baby step of like not repeating the reprints of, you know, all these documents, this is, you know, it's, it's for here and then it's for the school board's review, you know, at the board meeting level review and then coming back for the How second How come yours meeting. is twice as thick as mine? This is, this is everything on the, tonight's topic, you know. Come and here. again, even if we would just say, okay, first time, you have a paper copy, if, but then the second time around, just to you know, kind of have it be an electronic version of it that we didn't have to go back and. So you know. two things with that. Just I, we had asked last month, or we had discussed last month. Um, Lynn provided uh, access to two school districts that use mm -hmm. board docs. Did everybody get a chance to click those links and see what board docs, as it would pertain to Started board to have management? It, yeah. So. Um, so I, I would ask that you do that mm -hmm. so that we can put it on as a discussion item for next month. Um, there cool. are some, you know, there are some very, I believe, beneficial features to going paperless in board docs. I think, um, you know, after we had our had our learning and our, our growing from it, um, I believe that you know it would create a lot of efficiencies. Um, for our, our district office. I think that it would give board members, um, you know, some real time access to some documents. Um, 
you know, I, I think of the, you know, the finance committee and the HR committee that has a lot of last minute things that they, they deal with, um, you know, those things could be uploaded into that site. You wouldn't have to worry about running copies and, and everything else. Um, but again, it would be a behavior kind of in the broad thing. It would be a behavior thing for the board because, you know, you'd be required to show up with your iPads, know how to navigate board docs with your iPads. We'd certainly provide the training on it. It would have to be something that everybody's comfortable with, um, you know, as we went down that road. What we can do, because next month is gonna be a shorter agenda, we don't have, 40 or 50 items, I can ask that Lynn take and create a shared Google folder right. with all of this stuff. And so we'll clearly, you know, you'll see a PDF in there because some of this policy stuff is PDF. You'll also see a document in there. We'll clearly state it's going to require some navigation on your end and we can try to build an agenda in Google uh, for you so that you'd have an idea as to you know, kind of what it would be well, like. Should we bring our iPads? I'd encourage you to have your iPads with. Okay. Got yours yet? I don't have one, but I'll take my daughter's. So. <laughs> you can walk get one. Oh, no, no, oh, do I have one yeah, to the district? You should get a district. Oh, the district. Okay. Well, yeah. no, I guess I have one. I so. will walk you down to technology and we'll talk okay. about that. Thank you. Because I use one for the city plan commission. It's nice because we showed up and you can zoom and do whatever you need to do. Well, I say all of this. You know, we could have just click, yeah. here's the policy, you know, yep. <laughs> type of thing rather than, you know, have to have, yeah. have a agree. ream of paper. To be able to explain the process. I, I just think that having those, taking advantage of Google Docs and, and those kind of active links would just be. Yeah, and, the, and I think I said the last month, the reason why I, would be, I think it would benefit our system is all of these policies would be there in board docs. Mm -hmm. And so that the minute the board or the committee approved them, they don't automatically get uploaded into the policy. We have to send them into Neola, they get cleaned up in Neola, then they get uploaded to the site. But after they're approved, they're already public then. It's all public information. I could be on the phone with somebody and say, go to the policy committee of October 15th and look under the policy for abuse and neglect, and let's take a look at what the, the committee approved because it was a legal update. So it's official at that point. It would, be a, it would be official and it would be live at that point. It would be viewable for the entire public at that time. Well, I'm thinking like the, the, the cash handling policy that's now in effect. Yep. You know, it'd be nice for anybody that, you know, works with bookkeeping operations in our district to be able to say, okay, this is now policy. You know, wh what am I expecting to be, to be doing with this? Rather than a month or who knows how long later before it's actually, you know, back from Naola and, and officially published. So we will next month, um, if you could take the time to look at those sites mm -hmm. uh, independently, um, next month we'll come as a committee with a, it'll be a shortened agenda because we just don't have as much to talk about. Um, and we'll, you know, use Google Docs as a, a Google folder as a platform for us to start. Sure. Um, and then uh, see how that works for the committee. Okay. Thank you. Okay. With that, we, we've finished our business. We can adjourn. Thank you all.